Inazi Friedman, the eminent Polish pianist, has something to say about his great compatriot Chopin. We are sure listeners will be most interested in what this outstanding interpreter and editor of Chopin's works has to tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Friedman. About 30 years ago, I edited all the works of Chopin. For a long time, the German musical critic was regarded as the decisive one. Because of this, plenty of mistakes were caused in valuing anything which was not German music. For instance, very few people outside England have heard about the English composer Porcel, who, in my opinion, is as great as Bach or Beethoven. The German critic is responsible for this deplorable fact. Owing to the same German critic, a great number of people conceived the wrong idea that Chopin is a drawing room composer. As I pointed out in the foreword to the edition of his works, Chopin was a prophet who anticipated things for the future, which only started to be realized about half a century after his death. In other words, we find, we find in Chopin germs of Wagner, the later Russian school, and Debussy. Chopin has in his palette as many dramatic, epic elements as sentimental and romantic ones and is an unsurpassable example of what Petronius used to call Arbiter Elegantiarum. The opinion of the contemporary musical critics on the so-called matter-of-fact music, or rational or constructive music, is in my opinion wrong, false. The fact that Chopin remained unique in his music, that nothing of his musical soul or importance perished after a period of hundred years, and his compositions are gaining understanding and admiration now, all proves that Chopin is more vital than scores of musical messiahs who came and have gone. From the purely uh, pianistic point of view, Chopin revolutionized the entire technique. He discovered and exhausted the modern piano. So Liszt, for example, considered the greatest pianist of his time and composer as well, recreated only a great number of external sounds for piano transcriptions arranging orchestral works or vocal compositions in piano translation. Full of admiration for the violin technique of Paganini, Liszt rearranged his composition for piano. Chopin, on the other hand, extracts from the piano itself all sounds, aromas and colors in a masterful, unsurpassable manner. The technique of the modern French composers, such as Debussy or Ravel, is a sort of alloy of the art of old clavecinists and Chopin. The same may be said of Skriabin and Rachmaninov in Russia and Szymanowski in Poland. Chopin is essentially Polish in his art of composition, not only because he wrote mazurkas and polonaises, but also because his Polish spirit dominates his ballads, preludes, scherzos, or etudes. It is worth mentioning that the form of Nocturne and its romantic flavor is the invention of the Irish composer John Field 
who greatly influenced Chopin until the medium period of Chopin's activity. Good evening, Mr. Friedman. Good evening, Mr. Atkinson. Mr. Friedman, could you tell the listeners something about your great compatriot and musician, Ignacy Paderewski? I will do it with rare pleasure, and I'm very glad to be given the opportunity of paying a modest tribute to the great artist and distinguished man. Paderewski's career is, in my opinion, the most interesting in the history of music. His combined genius of a musician and a statesman gives a personality unique in the world. As a leader of his country, he conceived the best idea or rather vision of the future of his fatherland. Will you outline in brief the interesting features of his character? Well, it is rather difficult to do it impromptu. It would take hours to do that. I will try, however, to mention a few of the highlights. Padrevsky, as a man of 29, went to Vienna for the second time to his teacher and friend, Kreshetitsky, to take lessons from him, in spite of the fact that his career and fame as an outstanding artist and composer was already established. He started all over again to improve his art, to make it really great. His uh, material position wasn't good. He had to struggle, and his great teacher gave him lessons without fee, arranging them from, for him to appear at concerts and recitals. Two years later, Padrewski had gone very far and his miraculous career became second to none in the history of music. I would like to point out that there was nothing casual in this career, nothing due to clever advertisement. He earned his fame by hard work and his genius. We should remember that uh, a career which runs for a half uh, century without diminishing for a single moment is not faked and can't be accounted for be anything else except pure genius. Uh, did you ever come in personal contact with Paderewski? Yes. The first time was when I was nine. My teacher took me to him and I played for him, should I rather say before him. I met him years later in Australia, when he was, uh, was on his way to New Zealand. Finally, five years ago, I sent a cable to Padreski congratulating him on his 75th birthday. I received in a reply a very nice letter. That is most interesting, Mr. Friedman. Would you mind telling us more about his personality? Not at all. Padreski certainly a striking personality. His talents are universal. Had he not been a great virtuoso, he would have become famous as a composer. And it is rather a pity he didn't sacrifice more time for composing. He is one of the best speakers I have ever heard and has uh, excellent uh, command of five languages. He has been for half a century uh, an unofficial ambassador of his country, and his services in this connection are immense. He would have been a very good and talented journalist, and he is an excellent billiard and bridge player. He is a man of a great and good heart, and never was a man in need turned away without help. He spent nearly all of his great fortune, about seven million dollars, in the cause of Poland. I would like to finish my short tribute to this great man and artist by saying that in the history of Poland he will live forever as the greatest patriot of his fatherland. 
He will live forever in the memory of Mankin and generations to come as a great musician, great among the greatest.